Hello everyone and welcome back. This week we are following up on our video, I guess from two weeks ago, that we sped up the painting process of the first figure from start to finish. I got some good feedback about how that went and so I wanted to create another video just like it. In this video you'll see me work from beginning to end in this figure, starting with the ear, working over to the nose and eyes and lips and beard, all of that. I want you to really pay attention to the ways in which I'm using color here really leaning into a lot of grays and subtly applying those blue grays, gray greens all throughout the face as a wonderful delicate contrast. Those grays really soften the skin and allow us to blend into those yellow ochres, those burnt sienas in ways that feel really natural. In life there are a lot of these gray colors that we see in people's skin tones. This really kind of came to the forefront throughout this painting. Also notice how I use the structure of the glasses to really shape the face. There's some distortion that the glasses have on the eyes, and I lean into that, first painting the glasses so that I don't lose that form that I've already sketched out, and then painting within those frames. A lot of people have asked how this a la prima, or I guess maybe less a la prima in the sense that it's not all painted at once, but more direct painting in the sense that I'm going right to the color and not intending to layer on top of it. Learning this process really takes time and a really deep, rich understanding of your colors. It's something that I want to encourage you to lean into though. It forces you to slow down a bit in your painting, really considering the colors that you are painting, making sure that they're right from that get-go, from that first stroke. That doesn't have to be perfect every time you lay it down, but it does ask a question of you. Each time you lay down a color, you have to consider, is it the right color? Or do I need to readjust it before moving on to the next section, the next step? And so in that sense, it's slower, more methodical, and really forces you to consider the painting as a whole painting. Each color is in relationship to the colors around it, and the painting that you're making is robust and really relies upon all those colors to be in unison, acting together. It forces you to refine your palette and consider all the implications of the colors that you're using. So notice too the ways that I'm using that and considering that in this painting as well. And I wish there was a way to convey how to get those colors accurately the first time when you paint in a direct a la prima manner. But there really isn't. But what I can convey to you is the palette that I use and the ways I'm letting colors interact. From there, your process is your own. You're having to figure it out. You're having to kind of wrestle with it. It shouldn't come easy or natural. Layering doesn't either. There's a lot of time that goes into layering, a lot of time that you're relying on the painting to dry, to come back, to make adjustments. And you can layer for days and days and days, end over end. When you're painting in a direct method, you're kind of condensing all of those layers and adjustments down into a single moment, not letting yourself move on before really figuring out what's going on in that section of the painting. And this can be really helpful. It teaches you to know the form, to know color, and it teaches you to be okay with mistakes and slip ups in the moment. When a color is inaccurate or wrong, you can actually address it directly, go right to it. And that's what I love about direct painting. It forces me to learn on the spot, on the fly. It's forced me to consider how I paint a ton. I've monologued now more than I thought I would. Yeah, I hope that this is an enjoyable watch for you and allows you to learn about this painting from beginning to end. I'll throw on some music now and let you enjoy the rest of the painting. 